UV unwrapping is something a lot of people are scared of and tend to overcomplicate and think is a boring process, but with this video, I want to hopefully prove that I don't think this is the case. I think UV unwrapping is really easy and also really fun as long as you know how to approach it correctly. So let's get started. Now before we get into it, if you want something a little bit more kind of um, congested into one page, I do have a PDF on my website, the UV unwrapping guide if you want to download that. It kind of shows the best tips that I use for unwrapping, you can kind of use it as a reference, so check that out, link in the description. Now what I want to do here is show you my thought process behind unwrapping, hard surface models specifically, and um, where exactly you should be placing your seams. Now before we do any of that, we need to add in a checkered texture so we can actually preview those UVs. So I'm just going to add a material, you can name the material whatever you want, I'll call it UVs. And we're going to go to the shader editor here. And if you just press shift A and add in an image texture, and then we go to make this like 4K or something, and you can name this whatever you want. And then all we need to do is change this over to UV grid, and if we connect this up, now, when we go into material mode, we're going to see a nice checker texture, or maybe not. You're going to see some sort of color here. Now, if I were to just go into edit mode and smart UV project, so U, and then smart UV project everything, you're going to see we kind of have like this automated unwrap. Now, I never recommend automated unwraps like this unless you're quickly concepting because the seam placement is atrocious. You can see all these very clear discontinuities. So. I always like doing my seams manually, it's a very good skill to have. So let's go ahead and uh, start marking our seams. Now one thing I'd recommend you do is go up here and turn on this live unwrap feature so whenever you mark a seam on an edge, it'll actually update your, um, your UVs, but first we need to actually click unwrap. And then whenever we mark a seam, it's just going to update it, so make sure that feature is turned on. Now generally what I tell people is your seam should go on the hard edges of your model. Now you're going to see if I go up here to select sharp edges like I've shown in previous videos, not all of these edges really get selected because I actually have a bevel on every single hard edge. So for example, although the top here does look hard, it's actually not technically because I have a bevel here so the angle isn't as um, defined. But anyways, what you want to do is you want to picture the edges where if you rubbed your finger against it, you would probably, you know, feel, um, it would feel sharper than like a flat area, for example. If I rub my finger along this, not going to feel anything, but if I say I rub my finger along this edge, it's going to be a little bit more well-defined, potentially even sharp. So those are the ways you should think about sharp edges on your models. And that is where you want to place all of your seams as just a base explanation. We're going to, obviously there's exceptions to that as I'll show you in this video, but right now what we need to do is place all of our seams on those quote unquote sharp edges. Now you might be wondering in a case like this where I actually have bevels, you know, along here, which edge should I put it on? Should I put it on this one or this one or on this one? And to answer your question, I usually put my seams on the outer ones. So we're just going to go here and right click and mark seam. Go into material mode and I'm going to put all my seams on these more outer portions here. So what we're going to do is alt click here. Now make sure the um, selection doesn't leak into this area because we don't need these inside areas marked, just these outside areas here. So we're going to do that. And technically, since this is symmetrical, I can just do one side and then, you know, symmetrize to the other with the mesh machine. I could kind of save some time, but, you know, it's going to look like a complete mess as we go through this process. But eventually, the more we get these areas selected, the more, um, you know, the more clean results we're going to have. So we'll mark a seam here. And like I said, I'm just following along the outside portions of this model here, nothing crazy. So let's alt click on this one, mark the seam, and then we'll just kind of connect these together, mark the seam. And these we can unmark, we don't need those. Let me just quickly symmetrize to the other side. And if you ever symmetrize, make sure you just unwrap it again so it'll update. And you're going to see already we have a much cleaner looking layout. We have very clean straight UVs in this area because basically all of these UVs are contained into this one space and they're not kind of like leaking and wrapping around. 
So the more you mark these on the sharp edges of your model, the more of these clean results you're going to get. You can see how nicely that one updated. Now we're going to eventually get into situations where this isn't going to exactly do the job completely. And don't worry, I'm going to explain those. But for right now, I really want you guys to just focus on getting those seams marked on those hard edges here. I'm going to symmetrize and symmetrize. That looks pretty good. And you can just see the more we do this, the more of a clean result we're getting. Let me just go into the inside portion here because I also have some I need to mark on the inside. And by the way, um, if alt click doesn't work, you can select an edge and then alt click the same edge if you have mesh machine installed. It's a pretty useful feature so that way you don't have to like, you know, manually click around. Uh, we're going to mark the seam on that and just to save time, I'll symmetrize there and then there. You can unwrap it. And so far, so good. And then I'm just going to go in here and mark the seam on these little notches down here. Just make that look nice and clean. So, although we've basically marked every single sharp edge on this model, you're going to see that the outside portion here is still extremely warped, distorted, um, overall just a weird looking. Whereas, you know, areas like these are actually pretty clean. Now, this is where I'm going to talk about a concept called rings. If you've seen my unwrapping videos before, picture, um, you, you probably know this, but picture a, uh, a paper, a piece of paper, right? And you take both ends of that piece of paper and you tape it together. What are you going to have? You're going to have a piece of paper that is in the shape of a ring, okay? Now, what if you wanted to take that ring and flatten it out again? We just have to remove the piece of tape, right? And this is essentially what's happening here with this type of situation. If I go into face mode and press the L key and I go into the UV editor, just hop in you're going to see that this kind of takes on the formation of what looks like a ring almost. It's completely cyclic and connected together and almost looks like a ring. So what we need to do is we need to flatten out that ring so that way the UVs flatten out nicely as well. And the way we do that in terms of that tape analogy, um, removing the piece of tape to flatten it would be the same as adding a seam here in Blender. So. Um, you want to be very particular about where you mark your seams, guys, because, for example, I could mark a seam. Basically, I just have to connect these anywhere. I could put a seam right here, and you're going to see, um, once I do that, it'll actually update pretty nicely. But the issue here is there's a much better location I could have put this seam to avoid this very clear you know, discontinuity we have from that seam. And in a situation like this, I just want to use seams that kind of already exist to limit, you know, how much of that seam I have to really show. So, for example, this is a much smaller distance compared to having it go all the way down. You see what I mean? So we could put a seam there. And then to close off that ring, we also have to put one down here. Let's make sure these are fully connected because even if you have like a slight mismatch right here, it's not going to work. So just make sure you have these seams fully connected together. And guess what? Now when I press the L key, you're going to see that we don't have a ring anymore. It's actually flattened out more or less. And this is the first fundamental rule of UVs. You want to keep these UVs as straight and clean like this as possible because the more rings you have, the harder it is to pack the islands and the more distorted your UVs are going to look. See what I mean? Imagine you had like a, like a coloring book and you crumpled that piece of paper, whatever like page you had. It's going to be like all distorted and weird looking. You're not going to really be able to like make out what type of texture is going on. So kind of the same idea. You want to make sure these are nice and flat. Now we have another ring right here if I press the L key. But that's mainly because I haven't really focused on the inside yet. Okay. Now just for um, reference, if this is a game asset here, technically either side here could be the front because they're symmetrical. But say like you know, you had like a difference on each side and one side was like the back that you weren't going to see, that's where you would actually want to place the seam. So for example, if this was going to go against a wall in a game or something, this would be the good spot to place the seam because then when it's against the wall, you're not going to see that discontinuity there. So just keep that in mind. Try to place seams strategically based on how the model is going to be oriented in the game. And if you don't know, you know, just do it as best you can. So let's pretend this is the back of this um, model here, hence where I put the seams. And actually, it'd probably be an even better idea to put the seam 
you know, like right here instead. So it's even further back. So we're going to do that. Put the seam here so it's even further back. And then same for right here. Once again, make sure these are connected. And that's just going to be pushed a little bit further back here. So like I said, if this is meant to be the back of the crate, then this is going to be the front. So now you might be thinking, okay, so we're just going to put the seams for the inside because we have a big ring on the inside. We're going to put those seams in the back as well. So, you know, and also I forgot to mark a seam here on the top on this hard edge. So let me do that real quick. There we go. But as for the uh, ring here on the inside, you might be thinking, okay, back of the crate. Let's put a seam right here. We'll mark a seam. Looks better. And also down here, this is technically a hard edge as well. So we can close that off by marking a seam. And there we go. So I can just symmetrize that one over and unwrap it. And already it's looking a lot better. But technically this would actually be a bad place to mark that seam. Whereas this would be a good place to mark this seam. And the reason for that might not be super obvious. This is just something you kind of get used to and feel intuitively after doing this long enough. But let me explain why. So if this is meant to be the back of the crate where we're not going to see this seam, if we're facing the front of the crate most of the time, which seam are we going to see way more? One that's positioned here or one that's actually positioned right here behind the front? See what I mean now? If I'm facing the crate this way in a game, this seam is going to be a lot more obvious. Now obviously if I'm facing it from the back, it doesn't really matter, but you get the idea. This seam, when faced from the front of the crate, is going to be a lot more obvious to the viewer. So to just mask that seam a little bit better, instead of placing them here, let's place them right behind the front. And hopefully that makes sense, guys. You have to be very strategic about where you place these because a lot of people, although they know how to unwrap, they don't think strategically about where to actually place their seams when you could have a much better result. And look at how much cleaner these UVs look, guys. A lot better, a lot more straight. A little bit bent here, not a big deal. But you're going to see, since these are mostly completely straight, we have a much cleaner result here, which I like. Now, we do have a few rings right here. If I press the L key with the Sync Island Select turned on, it'll actually select where those rings are. And this is another situation where we need to flatten out these rings. We can kind of see in here, we have a ring kind of going around. So to flatten out that ring, let's put a seam. Since the character in the game would probably be taller than this, then it would probably be best to put the seam here on the top. And now you're going to see this one is nice and straight. And we can do one here as well. And then since this is symmetrical, I could just symmetrize that way and then that way. And then just unwrap it again. And now you're going to see we have these nice, you know, straight UVs here. Perfect. So hopefully as I begin to do this more, you begin to realize that this isn't really that complex. A lot of people like to overcomplicate this stuff, but you know, when you look at it, it's really not that complex. And I actually just realized I accidentally, when I did that symmetry to the other side, ended up canceling these seams out. So let me just add them again real quick. Be careful when you're doing symmetry because you might accidentally symmetrize a side that doesn't have seams and then remove the old ones. Anyways, not that big of a deal. Okay, so this is a pretty clean unwrap. I don't have too much um, too much beef with this unwrap. Overall, it's pretty straight, uh, pretty clean, and I'm, uh, I'm happy with it. Now, there are a few things we could do to make this even more efficiently packed because right now, this piece is occupying all the way from the left all the way to the right. And if I try to pack this with something like a UV Packmaster, I'm just not going to be able to pack as efficiently because this one is just hogging all the space. You see what I mean? So what you might want to do as an example is maybe, you know, take this piece and just chop it in half somehow. So for example, instead of having just one seam here in the back, maybe I could have, you know, symmetrize over and have another seam there. So it's just basically going to kind of separate this even more from that long elongated piece. See what I mean? We kind of chopped that off and now it's separate. So now we have a little bit more space to actually pack those islands, and I'll show you to pack in a minute. But if I show you the before and after, you can see, you know, placing a seam here just completely makes the resolution even higher once I unwrap it. You see what I mean? Resolution's a lot higher. So splitting 
UV islands is a very good idea so long as you're not compromising the quality because if you have, you know, seams everywhere, technically, if I just, you know, marked a seam in every single spot, we're going to have a pretty clean, you know, occupation here, but at what cost? A complete mess. You see what I mean? So just try to do that strategically. Do it where you can, and it's just going to be a much cleaner result all around. Now you might notice that we also have another ring right here. You can kind of see it's in the formation of one, technically. Um, you don't really need to worry about a ring that's in this formation because if we take a look at how the UVs are projected, um, it's actually completely fine because this is on a flat surface and also there's no sort of distortion. So rings like this are actually acceptable because the UVs aren't distorted at all. The main issues with the rings are when they wrap around in a corner like this kind of three-dimensionally but on flat surfaces they're actually uh, totally fine so don't worry about them so when I take a look at this if I kind of zoom in there's a little bit of warping going on right here just because of the way the topology is you can kind of see that here um, it's a little bit warped a little bit strange um, not that big of a deal not too much for me to concern myself with too much it's more or less consistent right here and also, make sure guys, I don't think I mentioned it yet, but when you unwrap, I would highly recommend changing this method here to conformal. Angle base sometimes goes a bit crazy. Um, I always use conformal when I'm doing um, UV unwrapping with hard surface models. It just uh, projects a little bit nicer. So like I said, this little distortion up here is not too big of a concern for me to waste my time on. I'm mainly worried about massive distortions. They're going to cause a very clear issue when I texture this inside of something like Substance Painter. But now guys what we have is a very clean unwrap putting the seams only in areas we need the most and I also noticed right here because I symmetrized I also put those seams there by accident so let me just remove those. And now we have you know a very clean unwrap with not too many seams I mean, you know we used as little as possible that we could actually um, get away with. So now what we need to do is pack our islands. So if you've seen any videos on UVs before, you've probably heard people say you need to occupy as much UV space as possible. While this is not incorrect, it's also not always correct because there's external factors that are not being considered. For example, um, if you're working on a team and you have a specific texel density requirement, I won't discuss texel density in this video, but basically what it is, is it's a certain resolution requirement. So say you had a crate and then you had like a barrel next to it, but the barrel had like a really low blurry resolution and this one had a very high clean resolution. It would look weird. So oftentimes you'll have like certain texel density requirements, certain resolution requirements that you must follow so that way that issue doesn't happen. Ideally this crate would be the same resolution as all the other models around it. So you know, occupying this entire UV square is a good thing, but if you actually want to reduce the resolution, it would do the exact opposite effect. But that's a topic for another video. I just want to show you how to get as clean of a pack here as possible. So before you do that, make sure you've split up as many islands as possible. I could technically, you know, mark more seams on this one if I wanted to, but those are going to be a bit more obvious, especially if I start putting them like on the side and whatnot, even though I could split this up more the juice isn't worth the squeeze. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use UV Pack Master. Now, I'd highly recommend getting this because this is the best packing tool on the market. Um, there is a packer here in Blender, but it is not very good and is not going to give you that professional quality result that you want. But basically what you would do is you would average the island scale, which makes sure the resolutions like everything's even here. And then you would go to Pack Islands and it does an okay job, but compared to what um, UV Pack Master is going to give you, it's night and day. So basically go here to Advanced Options, tick on Normalize Islands. That's just the same as the average island scale. And I turn on Heuristic and I just enable the search time to 5 seconds. So when I click Pack, it's just going to spend 5 seconds looking for the best possible packing result that it can find. And what I tell people is if you're at 0.7 or above, you're pretty much in decent territory. So basically, I don't know if you saw that number, but it was 0.754, which means 75.4% of this UV square is being occupied. Anything above 0.8 is generally going to be a very good result. And if you can go above 0.9, you're, um, you're going to have a really clean pack. 
In this case though, this is a decent result. This is gonna give me a good resolution. After doing this enough times, I know it'll be clean. And then you can start texturing this inside your software of choice. I personally use Substance Painter. Now, I'll throw an image of this textured on the screen. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna upload the texturing workflow I did. I did record this, but it was for our coaching and community people. So, and that's closed by the way. So I still don't know if I'm gonna upload that to YouTube or not. I might, we'll see. But um, that's the final result if you wanna see what the texturing looks like. And um, that's how you can you know unwrap your model and get a result like that. It starts with UVs and clean unwraps. So that's it guys, I hope the video helped. And if it did, uh, just leave me a comment, let me know what you thought. Um, if there's anything that didn't make sense, feel free to ask me. And like I said, there is a free UV unwrapping PDF you can grab on our site if you want something a bit more digestible that you can reference whenever you're doing your unwrapping. So I'll link that in the description. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.